Turn out truck, turn out truck. We got a verbal one on one. Alright, one Let's go, let's go. On March 29, 1996, New York City Fire Department Hook and Ladder Company 175 responded to a one alarm blaze at an abandoned structure. This call would be one that Dave Gianelli will never forget. I got off the fire truck and I walked over to the front of the building while the men were pouring water into uh, the fire to put the fire out. I said to the lieutenant, I said, I told him I heard kittens crying. As soon as I got off the fire truck, I heard some kittens crying. So I looked around in the smoke and I found three kittens right to the right side of the garage door, still huddled up together, you know, afraid, crying in a lot of pain. When Dave found two more of the mixed breed kittens, he assumed that their mother had left her litter behind to fend for themselves. But a few minutes later, Dave found the badly burned calico mother cat nearby and realized that she had risked her life to save her babies. This mother cat was in bad shape. She, she her face was uh, um, burnt. So I, I bent down, I picked her up real you know, nice and easy like, and I held her close to me like this. And uh, I started to get like emotional a little bit, you know, and I said, I can't do this. This is, you know, I gotta take care of this cat. Dave found an empty box to hold the kittens and their badly burned mother. The most amazing thing was when I put her in there, the condition that she was in, she actually, not being able to see at this point, she actually touched every one of them like she was counting one at a time, you know, made sure she had every one of her babies. And everybody around was like, I can't believe she's doing this. You know, she's actually counting. But with no one on scene to attend to their injuries, Dave drove them himself to the veterinary hospital at the North Shore Animal League. This nearby facility was equipped to handle burn victims. When I pulled into the parking lot, there was actually somebody in the parking lot waiting for me. Dr. Brown, Dr. Donnie Brown, to the medical reception area staff, please. Here, can you just draw up two um, 10 cc bonuses? Although each of the kittens was in need of treatment, it was the mother who was the most seriously injured. She's probably the worst burn victim that, at least at that time, that I had seen. She smelled of charcoal, she had charred skin, charred fur everywhere. Okay. Again, the concern's gonna be smoke inhalation on the kittens as well. She was burned around her face severely, all around her mouth, all around her eyes. Her pads were very badly burned, so it was painful for her to walk. Her mammary glands were burned and she was nursing, so that was a concern also. About 48 hours at least. That we're the hospital staff, who named the cat Scarlet, were all touched by her heroics. Just the fact that she went back into this fire to take out each of her kittens. You know, we see a lot of amazing animal stories, but even for us, that was one that really did get to us. We just couldn't believe it. They did all they could. The only thing left was to wait and worry. I think we really decided we were going to make it within sometime between 48 hours and a week after they were here. Despite their efforts, the hospital staff was unable to save one of the kittens. North Shore Animal League, Eddie speaking. Within a few days, the media picked up on the story of Scarlett's heroic actions, and the North Shore Animal League was inundated with calls and letters from around the world. Yes, we have Scarlett here. Many right. offering to adopt Scarlett and her kittens. They're all doing very well. If you'd like to check again tomorrow, we'd welcome your calls. Everybody wanted to help. There was a tremendous outpouring of phone calls as well as the press. A lot of letters came in. People were very, very concerned about her. Could they help? So it's your animal, Red League. Teddy speaking. So then the question was, how do you pick a home when so many people wanted them? And we decided the only fair way was to have some sort of contest. And so we came up with the idea of asking people to please write in and describe why they felt their home would be perfect for Scarlett and or the kittens and why they wanted to adopt them. We went through 
close to a thousand letters uh, and read them and we narrowed it down and eventually the three homes were chosen. While the four surviving kittens were adopted by two families, Scarlett found a new loving home with writer and New York resident Karen Wellen. Karen's heartfelt letter touched everyone who read it. I wrote that I had been in a car accident and at the same time I had lost my cat of 21 years and it was a very difficult time for me and I knew that for me to get another cat, to allow another cat to enter my life, it would have to be a very special cat and I felt that Scarlett was that cat. Although she requires daily medication for injuries to her eyes that she suffered in the blaze, Scarlett is otherwise healthy. She's put on weight and at 15 pounds has become a loving member of Karen's family. Wow. <laughs> and there is no doubt that everyone that has come to know Scarlett has been touched by the selfless courage of this brave mother cat who risked her life to save her babies. This cat has been through more than any human or any animal should ever have to go through. And she's just incredibly sweet. Here was this cat who just instinctively knew to go ahead and save her kittens. And everybody was just amazed that this cat had done this and thought of her as really a model for motherhood everywhere in the world. It's the first time I ever heard of a cat going in to a building back and forth that many times. Most of the time, they're running out as we're running in. So I give her a lot of credit, and I think she's, uh, she's number one. I think she won um, Cat of the Year. I think she's definitely a Cat of the Year.